G'day and welcome to the iconic outback destination of Broken Hill in New South Wales. Now, this town has been on my bucket list for a long, long time. I am so glad that we're finally here making a video. If you're planning your own visit, we have 10 amazing things for you to do. Let's get into it. Welcome to Broken Hill. In this video, we'll pound the pavement on a heritage walking tour. Pay our respects at the Line of Load Miners Memorial. See the living desert sculptures shine at sunset. Party at the palace, the spiritual home of Priscilla, queen of the desert. Sample some outback moonshine at the Broken Hill Distillery. And, oh Mr Hart, what a mess, or masterpiece, you be the judge at the fabulous Pro Hart Gallery. All that and more is coming up. But before we put the pedal to the metal, take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing travel ideas. Broken Hill is situated in the far west of New South Wales, just over 1,100 kilometres from the state's capital, Sydney. It's seriously remote, but what may surprise you is the size of the city, which is home to just under 20,000 people. Broken Hill has a rich mining heritage, stretching back well over a century. That gave rise to a wealth of period buildings, so many in fact that Broken Hill has a special claim to fame. I'm meeting up with Visitor Services Coordinator Patrick to find out more. Well, Broken Hill was added to the uh, National Heritage List, uh, I think it was January 2015. Um, that came after about 10 years of lobbying because it's never happened before. So there's a hundred and odd uh, places on the National Heritage List. but never ever a whole town or a whole city. They ended up having a number of criteria, so five or six criteria of why Broken Hill was added. Um, it had to do with the natural environment, had to do with the mining culture. Then you have the whole culture and art of Broken Hill. So there was a few different uh, reasons. The geology is another one. Broken Hill's got the largest variety of minerals anywhere in Australia. It is also now the longest running mining town in Australia, so the main ore body here has been continuously mined since 1883. Then going down the main street you see a lot of beautiful buildings that were erected, most of them in the late 1880s and throughout the 1890s. Broken Hill has done a very good job in just keeping those original facades the way they looked back then. Now, it's not hard to see why Broken Hill was inscribed on the National Heritage List in its entirety. I mean, this is a living time capsule of Australian architecture, really, really stunning, including this example, Trades Hall. Broken Hill has a very strong history of trade unionism, stretching all the way back to the beginning of mining on the line of load, including campaigns like the Broken Hill Miners' Strike of 1892, which were all designed to achieve better working conditions for miners. One of the um, visually most uh, interesting things to see when you're coming into town, you see it from quite a while away, is the hill that, that separates North and South Broken Hill and that's basically the ore body. So it's about seven kilometres in length but you can drive all the way up to the top. It's the highest point in town, it's a great lookout. You've got a couple of buildings up there the bigger one is a cafe, the smaller one is the Miners Memorial. And that was erected uh, back in 2001, um, commemorating the 800, more than 800 miners that have lost their lives on the Broken Hill Mines since the very beginning. It's a very, very touching memorial. Um, and it does list them all chronologically. It's a very sombre reminder of how difficult and dangerous mining used to be back in the day. And positive changes that have come in work health and safety. Now extracting ore is one part of the mining process. You also need to move it around. The engaging Sulphide Street Railway and Historical Museum shares the story of the famous Silverton Tramway. Rail developed Broken Hill, full stop. 
When uh, silver, lead and zinc was discovered in 1883, the, the owners of the mines knew straight away that they needed a permanent um, reliable source of transport to get the ore to port. So by 1888 they had done that, they had formed the Silverton Tramway Company uh, to run the 49 kilometre uh, rail between Broken Hill and the South Australian border um, and back because the, the two governments could not agree on extending their, their, their services to this mining town as it was in those days. No surprise there. No surprise, nothing's changed a great deal. In 1888 it was formed and it ran from 1888 to 1970, supplying Broken Hill with uh, uh, passenger service and all their freight. Uh, but of course, the most important thing, getting that ore to port. The people that come here now, they see a wonderful collection of uh, railway memorabilia. Uh, we have a migrant museum, which tells the story of uh, non-English speaking background people that made Broken Hill their home. Um, we have a hospital museum that gives us all the history of the Broken Hill Hospital. We have a transport pavilion and of course uh, we've recently opened the Funfair Pavilion which is, uh, is all Broken Hill memorabilia. So come, you'll enjoy it. Now what may come as one of the biggest surprises of your visit to Broken Hill is the number of art galleries. There are more than 20 to explore around town, including this one, possibly the most famous, the Pro Heart Gallery. Now anyone who grew up in the 1980s, like I did, will remember the Stainmaster commercials with that famous dragonfly. It's on display here at the gallery, along with many of Pro's other amazing works. Let's go and take a look. Kevin Pro Hart, one of Australia's best loved contemporary artists, passed away in 2006, but his legacy lives on at the family run Pro Hart Gallery. Pro lived and worked in Broken Hill for most of his life, and the city and surrounding outback were key sources of inspiration for his work. A painter, sculptor, performance and experimental artist, Pro was well known for his creative techniques, which included firing paint and other materials from a cannon. Don't try this at home, it's messy. Now, speaking of exuberant artworks, the Palace Hotel's famous murals earned it a starring role in the hit Aussie film, The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. I asked Managing Director Esther how it came about. Stephen Elliott, the um, writer and director of the movie, told me that he um, had been uh, out scouting around for places uh, for the movie and the location scout was driving him around town and showing him uh, places and he said he kept on going down the main street and sort of, what about that place? Like, what about there? What about where? And they were sort of like, oh, I don't think you really want to go in there. And that just piqued his interest even more. So Mario Cialotto, who did own the building from the mid 70s, was a very um, sort of probably avant-garde and very colourful character. Um, he sort of painted some of these murals that are in the building, um, but he also just left this very quirky interiors. And Stefan said when he he just decided one afternoon, right, I really want to go in there, and, and sort of came in and went, oh, you know, this this place is already you know already a built set, I guess, um, and knew that he wanted to include it in the movie. Do you get people coming in requesting to stay in that particular suite? Oh, we sure do. In? Yeah, of course. So we, um, of course, have named it the Priscilla Suite. Um, we've tried to keep it as true um, as it was to where they do stay in the movie. It has had a bit of a renovation in the bathroom there, of course. We went with a bit of Priscilla meets Liberace theme in there, so we had a lot of fun. Um, it is a really popular uh, room all year round. We've actually just in the process of renovating a secondary um, ensuite room and we are doing another sort of Priscilla theme in there. So uh, lots of sort of fun uh, spaces uh, for people to come experience while they're out here. We do have regular drag shows here. We do drag bingo usually once a month, drag karaoke. I mean, I guess like any sort of um, outback hub, you sort of 
put it put it all on really and that's um that big mesh and mix of people and events and entertainment is part of the part of the fun Just a stone's throw from the Pro Heart Gallery, the excellent Broken Hill Distillery is a relatively new addition to the city and well worth a visit. This boutique gin maker offers a mid-morning distillery tour and guided tasting for $20 per person at the time of our visit. Our guide walks us through the production process, which is very clearly a labour of love. We head outside afterwards for the tasting, which includes the chance to sample the distillery's characterful gunpowder gin and Outback Moonshine. Stay on at the neighbouring pub afterwards for lunch. Alrighty, the Living Desert Sculptures are located about 20 minutes drive from the centre of Broken Hill. Now you can do a short walk up to the sculptures if you're up for it, but you'll just need to time your visit accordingly so that you make it up here at sunset. We've taken the high road to get here a little bit quicker. Let's go and take a look. The Living Desert Sculptures are possibly Broken Hill's most popular attraction. The 12 sandstone artworks were created by a mix of local and international artists and unveiled back in 1993. There's a small fee to enter the Living Desert State Park, but it's well worth it to see the sculptures and soak up the sublime setting. Most visitors to Broken Hill also head out to the tiny town of Silverton, 30 minutes drive northwest of the city. Looking like something straight out of a Hollywood western, this former mining settlement has indeed found fame as a film set in recent decades. More on that shortly. Drop by the Silverton Hotel, which is packed with character and frequented by wandering donkeys. There's lots of memorabilia on display and the beer is icy cold. Just a short walk from the pub, another of Australia's most iconic films is celebrated at the Mad Max 2 Museum. Mad Max 2 was filmed around Silverton and Broken Hill in 1981 and Yorkshire-born Adrian Bennett opened a museum in honour of the Road Warrior. Well, it all started actually 40 years ago, it was 1982, and a couple of friends of mine told me that I need to go see these biker movies called Mad Max and Mad Max 2. I'd never heard of them. Uh, I wasn't really keen on going at the time, I would have preferred to have gone to the pub, uh, but uh, went to see them and couldn't believe what I'd seen on screen. So I uh, became um, you know, curious about the films, very passionate about these movies and just wanted to know as much as I could about them and then eventually moved out here to where some of the film was shot in Silverton and, and opened the Mad Max Museum. We've got all kinds of paraphernalia uh, from uh, props, uh, hundreds of behind the scenes photographs, um, scripts, call sheets, all this kind of thing, costumes pieces, um, vehicles, we have replica and real, real vehicles as well, of course most of the vehicles were destroyed in the film but we've managed to salvage and come across some of them. Most people that um, when they associate uh, the, the Mad Max movies, it really is about the vehicles and the stunts for the majority of people but without the, without the stuntmen, certainly without the stunt coordinator Max Aspin, who, who we lost sadly a few years ago, um, th th this film certainly wouldn't have been, been what it is, you know, I mean, they, they really gave it everything they had, you know. And I've got to tell you as well, you know, uh, the majority of the film, I'd say 80% of the film was actually Broken Hill locals, not actors. Uh, Broken Hill locals driving vehicles, apart from, apart from about six stuntmen that they had, uh, everybody else was from Broken Hill. So again, this wouldn't be allowed now, but back then, uh, and they just enjoyed it. I mean, this is what they used to do on a weekend anyway. So they dressed them up, 
paid them a wage and says, go out there and have a good time, you know, and they just filmed it and they just, it was just incredible. You know? But that's it really, a a anything and, and, and everything to do with Mad Max 2. If I had no choice but to grab something and run, it would have to be, three items would be the boomerang, the music box and the fork, the three things that you see when you first come into the display. Those are so special pieces, in, even small pieces, but in scenes, memorable scenes. I mean, of course, the dog food eating scene with, with Max up the pinnacle and, uh, uh, of course, when he's got the music box and he gives to the kid and, of course, who, who, you know, the, the, you've got the, the feral kid with the steel boomerang, you know, so... But, yeah, if I, had to, if I had to kind of, you know, grab three things and run, it would be the boomerang, the fork and definitely the music box. And finally, what better way to wrap up your stay in Broken Hill than with a sweet treat? A visit to Bell's Milk Bar on the southern side of town is like stepping straight onto the set of Greece. The original store that occupied this site in the 1890s sold candy and cordials. The Bell's you see today was born in the 1950s and carried on the tradition of serving syrupy slurp fests. There's a rainbow of milkshake and soda spider flavours to choose from. And I was more than happy to sample their signature lime spider in the name of research. For more ideas for great things to do in Broken Hill, just visit our website.